Namaste, Nick here. And today I'm going to be talking about the posture of Tadasana or mountain pose and telling you a little bit about why it's not only important for structural reasons and as a centering pose, but also how it can be used to help find a neutral point in your body that can help to work with your thoughts. So that may seem a little bit disconnected and I want to just explain before we get into how to structure it. When we have thoughts that are no longer serving us, that are outdated, that are looping in our minds, we know we're agitated, I wish I could change but I can't stop thinking X. When we have those thoughts, it can be really hard to stop them or to change them. It's like, why won't they just go away? Well, if you watch my last video a little bit about alchemy and how we can go from thinking one thing through a process of neutralization into coming to a different, not just thought, but relationship to the thought. When we can do that, beautiful alchemy as I call it, then we are literally changing the way our brain is thinking and how we're turning up in the world. Now, I gave an experience in the last video about using the breath. Today, I wanted to use a posture. And the posture that is the most neutral, except for Shavasana, is Tadasana. Tadasana is the upright version of Shavasana corpse pose. Tadasana means mountain and you can see the difference between being upright is the spinal column is aligned from, if you think about the sky to the earth, this way it's a receptive way of being versus this way where we're completely on the earth and it's very passive. So how can we connect ourselves with our spiritual self, with our higher self to find neutral and allow this alchemy to happen. Tadasana. So let's go through the seven segments that I was shown and taught in Ishta Yoga to help align not just the physical but the energetic body. And the energetic body is arranged through subtle channels called nadis. They are seen almost like little tiny silver threads of energy pathways in the body and they're said to be 72,000 of them. They come together at various parts of the body as like a, a nerve plexus and those we would call chakras. Those chakras are what give us um, information about various systems in the body and the energy field around us. So if we can get those nice and aligned, they're going to be much better at kind of intuitively guiding us in our lives. So let's get to it. So we start with the feet. So I'm gonna show you from here and then I'll show you from the sides. The first thing to do is to, lay, to look at your feet and make sure that they're very parallel. And we want to be equal to the inside and the outside of the feet. So the feet are as neutral as possible. And then that neutrality, imagining from the ankle joint is a very good place marker to travel up through the knees so the knees are not forward or back. Have a little bit of a bend in the knees like a micro bend so that that energy, imagine you had a tube, you wouldn't want to squeeze the tube off. That energy continues traveling up the thigh bone, the femur bone, all the way up to the center of between the inner and outer thigh, that central point is where your hip bone insertion is. So you can take your hands in front of your pelvis, the hip crease, and just notice here whether your butt is sticking out or your pelvis is forward. See if you can find the pubic bone at the front, the tailbone at the back, and have them nice and neutral. That would be the first segment of the body. The second segment that we want to have neutral is the, um, sorry, the feet is the first, the pelvis is the second, 
The next would be around the belly button, around this waist. Oftentimes people are pushing their belly forwards or they're kind of collapsed in, like they've got wrinkles around here. Want to lift the rib cage up and have a nice, almost as if you were wearing like a rubber ring around the side of the body. So that's the third segment. Then in the center of the chest, just between the two ribs splaying apart, there's a little place called the xiphoid process. It's like a little tail that goes down. <laughs> it's a bit sensitive, so be careful. And then the other hand, you imagine coming about halfway down to the, almost the end of the thoracic spine. So where the thoracic spine, the upper back, reaches into the curve of the lower back, there, see if those two feel aligned front to back. So don't let yourself round here or push forward with the ribs. Can you align the xiphoid process in the front with the ribs at the back? And here we're at the fourth segment of the body. Then we come to the neck. Now on the front side of the body you have your collarbones, they go side to side, and there's a little notch just between the collarbones. So you could feel it has a, like an indentation in it. It's called your jugular notch. And at the back of your head, just at the base of the neck, you'll feel there's like a bump bone. That is C7. Now, if you have one hand in the front and one hand in the back, you'll notice that they're not horizontally lined up. There's a little bit of a diagonal. So I want you just to notice if that diagonal feels lengthened, like the front hand is going down and the back hand is lengthening up. And then, see if you can take a little swallow of saliva and notice if you're contracting your throat in any way and relax the inside of your throat. So this is the fifth segment. And the neck is long, the ears are away from the shoulders and the throat is soft on the inside. Now the last couple of places that I want you to go to are place your first two fingers just above your eyebrows. So where your eyebrows cross, just above, and then that place where your second finger touches is the third eye, meaning that right behind your skull, in the center, just above the top of the brainstem, there's a little gland, and there's a pineal gland right there, which is your mind's eye the ability to imagine, the ability to think whatever you like, really. So imagine that little bead inside softening. And you're balancing it with the back of the skull. So you could take your hand to the top and then the back of the skull and just tilt your head back and forward, up and down, until you feel as if you were, you know, looking down a, a radar to really get that pinpoint perfect place. And then from here, go to the top of your head and imagine a plumb line all the way down to your feet. And you're dropping a silver cord through the center of your skull, drops down behind your eyes, drops down behind your nose, behind the back of the upper palate, down your throat, through the center of your chest, behind your belly button, through the center of your reproductive organs, and down through the pelvic floor, down to the space between the feet. Turn the palms slightly open. And we'll stay here for a couple of breaths just to let your body feel neutrality. We are so often literally being pulled in so many directions. This pose, Tadasana, is like a pit stop to bring yourself back to neutral that you need if you want to make a change. So let's take three breaths, imagining that you could breathe from the floor of your feet all the way up that silver cord, passing through all seven segments of the body, just not just to the head, but above the head, pausing, 
And then when you exhale, it lowers down, almost like an elevator, super slow. So not zooming down, but down through the central shaft of the body and not just to the pubic bone, but all the way down to the feet and even into the basement. And then we'll do that again, breathing in the elevator, feeling lifts up to the feet, to the pelvic floor, center of the pelvis, navel center, center of the chest, center of the throat, third eye center, crown, and slightly above. And then crown, third eye, throat, heart center, navel center, second chakra, lower part of the torso, round earth and lower. This time as you breathe in, let your arms come up overhead, leading the energy up a little bit higher. You can let your fingers touch and gaze up towards your thumb, imagining that your energy was all the way up there. And then as you breathe out, drag the thumbs down, back to the center of your chest, holding this neutral place, hands together. So again, if you're looking to do alchemy to neutralize the thoughts using the physical body and the pose of Tadasana to help do that, gently bow forward. Thank you for coming to this practice today. May it serve you well. Hari Om, Om Tat Sat. Namaste.